Okay, so welcome to Security and Privacy by Design, a developer's guide to threat modeling with OWASP SUM. Now, this is actually the only part of the presentation that was generated with ChatGPT. I'm not really happy with the title, so let's, let's not, well, I'm going to cover this in terms of a topic, but actually what, what, what we've been doing is, um, we've been, well, we've developed threat modeling capabilities as a tool. I'll explain what it is. And, the capabilities, as you'll see, is really interesting to develop and, and to use uh, when you want to implement threat modeling in your, in your organization. Um, but it does not really describe how. Okay. Something's wrong here. Oh, there it is. Back. Um, so for that, uh, to, to how to do this and why to do this, we mapped the threat modeling capabilities to OWASP SUM. And also later on to do also to something else. So I've been doing quite some mapping over the last couple of days, uh, but also I, luckily not alone, Aram helped me as well. So uh, I am Sebar Sebastian Leersneider, uh, based in Belgium, uh, co-founded a company called Torium, where we do climate security related services, also threat modeling training if you're interested. Um, but in my free and spare time, I uh, also involved quite heavily in OWASP as an organization, started the Belgium chapter in 2005 and have been leading uh, the OWASP SUM project together with Bart and also luckily with a big team that's that's working on uh, on SUM. So what are we going to cover? Um, I only have like 85 slides, so that, that should work, but don't worry, there's a lot of build-up slides. First going to provide a short introduction on threat modeling. I assume you know what it is, and then I'm going to explain what OWASP SAM is and how that potentially then can be used. I'm going to explain the threat modeling capabilities, of course, um, and then see how can we map those capabilities on the software assurance maturity model. And then later on, what we'll also see is, well, that in itself is not enough. We still need to have like some kind of timeline and a roadmap to build out these capabilities. And then at the last, at the last part of this presentation, I'm going to show you like the, the minimum, the minimum viable product of setting up threat modeling in an organization and what you would need for that in terms of capabilities. So threat modeling, threat modeling is analyzing like diagrams, representations of, uh, of, of real systems um, to look for, for trouble, for potential concerns in terms of security, in terms of privacy, obviously not with the goal of just identifying them, but to, to do something about that, yes. That's what threat modeling is. And um, it's really a pivotal activity in a lot of organizations um, to understand why certain security activities have to be done um, and, and how to implement those in a really efficient way in our organization. Now, how to do and how to implement AppSec or security activities as part of your organization, um, there OWASP some, and obviously I'm a little bit biased, but that's really a good framework to understand what you can do, but also to measure your security activities in a way that you can demonstrate that to your internal management, to your external stakeholders, to an auditor. Um, so it makes AppSec measurable. And that's the, the, the elevator pitch of, of OWASP SAM. And if you can measure it, you can improve it. It's versatile in a way that you can apply it on all kinds of technologies. Uh, you can also apply it on waterfall projects, on agile projects. And it's quite actionable. It provides really clear description on how to implement the different security activities and the different security practices. This is an overview of, uh, of the OWASP SAM. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on explaining what it is. So these are the all the security practices in there. The most important one, the most interesting one, is the one on threat assessment, the threat modeling part, because that's what we're going to focus on today. Threat modeling is really going to help us understand more about security requirements. It's going to help us uh, improve our security architecture. It's going to make us more efficient at doing security testing and even understand also if it goes wrong, how we can become better at incident management. So it's really, there's a lot of ties and the relationships between the different security practices in, uh, in, in, in SAM. And SAM, by definition, really is also a risk-driven framework. Now, how do we understand those risks? How do we translate it in software? That's through this activity called threat modeling. So that was, in a nutshell, in five minutes, threat modeling and, uh, and SAM. Now, threat modeling itself as an activity is um, 
can become quite complex. And what we have done, and when I say we, uh, definitely not me, myself alone, but together with a lot of smart people from the Threat Manifesto um, group, last year is we came out or we developed a list of threat modeling capabilities, a catalog of capabilities to help you create value from your threat modeling practice and to help you demonstrate that. So to help you understand, okay, I need to do threat modeling. What does that mean? What kind of capabilities do we need for that? So what's, what are these kind of like capabilities then? So these are called like organizational activities. It's a certain objective. It's a um, specific goal, um, but it does not explain you how or why or when to do this. It's just like you have it or you don't have it. Yes. And that's, that was the goal, I would say the design goal of creating, creating these kind of threat modeling capabilities. Um, there were quite a lot of them, uh, and they're grouped around a number of areas, around strategy, around education about threat modeling, creating threat models, obviously, on acting about, uh, acting on threat models, um, how to communicate your threat model, and then the measuring threat modelings and your program management. So there are seven process areas, areas in those capabilities. One example, and I'm going to show you all of the, the threat modeling capabilities, but I'm not going to explain them all in detail. I will, we won't need, uh, we don't have that time. But one example is you have to make time to do threat modeling. You have to budget for it. You have to make sure that people are there and understand what it is. So resource allocation is a sp specific capability, part of strategy that you have to have. Otherwise, it's going to be really difficult. Yes. These are all the capabilities. So there's quite a lot of them, and they're grouped around the, the seven areas. And, and they're really great. Uh, that there's, and, and most of these are really relevant for doing threat modeling. Problem with this is, okay, now we have these capabilities and the descriptions of these capabilities, but how can we make this actionable? Well, the threat modeling capabilities are there for you to create your own roadmap for your own program. And you'll have to look at your own organization, your use case, your teams, your products, your risk profile, your risk appetite, and see, okay, what components are going to be interesting and necessary for us in our organization? And based on those needs, then you can build your own program. But as I explained, the capabilities just explain you what it is, not how or why. So what we're going to do here, and there also Aram, is Aram here? Ah, there you are. Aram helped me out with that, um, and then also had to do a little bit more of, uh, of those mappings. Uh, we've mapped the capabilities on some, because creating all these capabilities really looks a little bit like setting up an SDL. Uh, we have to create these uh, secure development lifecycle activities around threat modeling. There will be governance around it. There will be design activities. So that's, uh, that's how that works. So we have to understand the why and we have to understand the how. Now, uh, we've just released this. So this tiny URL, uh, so this is not a phishing test, will point to a Dropbox folder. This is actually our shared folder within the OWASP SAM project where you can already see and download the this kind of uh, mapping file. Uh, what's in there is that for each threat modeling area and the capability is detailed and then the mapping is there to some, but also to the threat modeling playbook, which I'll explain later on. Yes. So how do these mappings work? So remember we had the five business functions within OWASP SAM. One of them is governance. Now what we've done is we've looked at what kind of capabilities do we need to set up as part of our governance of our threat modeling program? And actually, there's four of them. Value assessment, status tracking, value-driven management, and metrics-driven management. Now, by mapping these, and, first, and for all, the value-driven management is the first one. This is structuring and managing and defining your threat modeling program and demonstrating the value of it. Yes, that's, that's how it works, and that's the, this part. So th this is a description here of this particular 
capability is. Now what we've done is we've mapped that one actually to strategy matrix level two, stream A, define the security strategy. So to actually create this capability, this will be a part of your software assurance maturity activity defining your security strategy. And you'll be doing much more than only threat modeling, but this activity in some will help you create this kind of capability. And that's how the mapping works. And this is just the ex like one example. I'm not going to explain all them individually because we've mapped all of them. Yes. So next one, value assessment maps on defining basic security metrics. Status tracking is setting your KPIs, tracking the progress of setting up your threat modeling capabilities program. And then metric-driven management is measuring what you're doing, and this is driving your security program through metrics. And this is the first part of mapping controls, all these, uh, sorry, capabilities to strategy and metrics. That's not the end. We also have to put in place governance around the execution, and that maps towards our policies and, comp uh, policies and standards. So we have to mandate or at least encourage threat modeling as an activity. So by building that in, in a way that we're setting up our policy and the way of we're working within our organization, that will help and support the different teams in doing this. Yes. And then also we need to have that resource allocation that I explained earlier on. So this perfectly fits defining policies and standards in OWASP SAM. Education and guidance is obviously cover covering a lot of these capabilities. Yes. Obviously providing training, Maps on people skills development, training assignments, part of customizing the training, adaptive learning, making sure you customize the training towards your own stack, your own, I would say, specific challenges in, in threat modeling within your own organization. Make sure that it's part and integrated in your, uh, in your training program. Obviously, align uh, your training with the way that your organization is working. I don't know why it's doing this. Yes, probably. So, okay. No more. And then the resource allocation. So you see some of these capabilities come back because they map on more than one some activity. In this case, Organization and culture, identifying security champions. This is a level one activity. These are really good candidates to help you out with your threat modeling, so they will be part of resource allocation. Obviously, you have to make sure that there's support in doing this. So identifying security champions, they also need to be supported through a center of excellence, uh, making sure that they know what threat modeling is, that they get time to do this, and so on. This center of excellence, which is a level two activity in education and guidance, really also maps really well on positive reinforcement, which is a capability that um, whenever the outcome is of a threat model, but that we share that with the different people and different stakeholders and the participants of threat modeling, so that we celebrate success, so that there's a positive feedback loop in, uh, in the organization. Experience availability, making sure that we have people that have a lot of experience in threat modeling, helping out the different teams in doing that. Uh, so this maps really well, again, on uh, EG2B, uh, the Stream Implementing Center of Excellence. Um, setting up a collaborative program development, again, maps on this, uh, uh, on this security stream, and then uh, constructive conversations as well. So you see there's lots of capabilities that map on the organization and culture stream in, uh, in governance, which really makes sense. Yes. So the next part is design. So we've now covered organization. Design, one of the security practices in there which is quite important, and we've, we've actually just before uh, before this talk, uh, we were doing an update on uh, on OWASP SAM in another room. Security requirements is one of the activities that are being done the most by organizations based on the, the first benchmark results. Using the outcomes of a threat model 
as input for your security requirements is critical to make that link in uh, with the different between the different security activities so that those threat models are just not created for as like as an activity in themselves but they are actionable so standardizing and integrating security requirements within some is really the activity where that links to where seamless alignment as a capability will uh, will support that and then also if we look at threat assessment and there's obviously most of the capabilities here that you see here will map on the threat assessment. Security practice will, uh, will obviously fit those capabilities. The first one is, are we going to threat model all the applications? Probably not. We're going to focus on the ones that are important for your organization. So application risk profile is the stream within threat assessment and portfolio prioritization is the capability that fits that. So there's a clear one-on-one -on -one mapping here. Obviously, doing the threat modeling, active practice as doing the threat modeling, but also learning from that maps on the threat modeling itself. So the level one in threat modeling is performing basic threat modeling. Also capturing the output. So threat modelings are saved and versions and maintained is also uh, linked to that. And then criteria to indicate how the output maps on uh, security and privacy and what your definition of done is really maps on uh, on this in this uh, practice as well. So most of the capabilities here will be mapping on the actual activity of threat modeling. So I'm not going to explain all of them because we will be doing much more mappings than this. Um, reviewing your risk profiles as part of risk management, collecting feedback, uh, continuous change, optimizing your threat modeling practice uh, really maps uh, here as well. And last but not least, tools to do threat modeling also fit some in the threat modeling stream in there, and, but are actually a level three activity. So tool-assisted processes, uh, which is a capability here, maps on optimizing threat modeling. And integrating that in your life cycle, making sure that your threat modeling program also evolves over time, uh, is also integrated in that. If we then shift to implementation, there's a couple of capabilities there that are important. Um, defect management is a really important security practice in there, and so tracking security defects, so everything that comes out of your threat model should be tracked and should be followed up, and that maps on defect tracking. And then whatever you do with that, you use those metrics, so the outcome and what the results of your threat model were to improve the, your threat modeling program as a whole. And that is also part of defect management. So these are very logical mappings as well. And then part of verification, next business function is we, there's an architecture, architecture assessment part. So whenever you assess a system, you're also not only assessing the system itself, the architecture. That maps really well on threat modeling. And system and threat comprehension is a capability that's where uh, you ingest the system architecture, and that's really described in that, uh, in that particular stream, and that you put that, that those conclusion and you link that with actually also with extra threat knowledge. So we'll be seeing this one, also this capability coming back in a couple of other some practices as well. Pattern catalogs. Once you do more than a couple of threat models, you'll see the same kind of risk patterns come back again and again. Like, for instance, you're using some kind of authentication mechanism in your organization, and you really want the different teams to use that. That's part of your catalog of risks and, and, and catalog, a catalog of, of controls. Matching those, cataloging those, and making sure that you're going to re reuse those in your reference architectures later on is going to uh, help you there. And then again here, you also have the seamless alignment, which also is not only going to provide you with security requirements driven testing, but also your abuse case testing. And then last but not least, in the operations part, we have again that system and threat comprehension because of that link with that external threat intelligence, which will help us to prioritize patching. So you see quite a lot of mappings here. Now, in itself, those mappings are really valuable to see, okay, if we want to build out, out those capabilities, how do they fit? But what we also learn from that is what kind of capabilities really map on 
level one activities. Okay. So maturity level one activities, because of the mapping to the streams, we've mapped them up until the level of the maturity. These are the level one capabilities that we have in the overall catalog. So if you want to like do the least amount of capabilities for basic level, the maturity level one of some, these are the capabilities, and they'll come back later. Obviously, we've also identified the level two capabilities and the level three capabilities. And you see here that these map really well on capturing feedback, becoming better at this, improving your program. And we also have a couple of orphans. It means that sum is not perfect. Obviously, we can't map everything into a sum. Um, but also, the threat monitoring capabilities cover a couple of capabilities that were just hard to map in, uh, in, in individual activities in sum. It, that's absolutely not a problem. You just have to be aware. So now we know how to integrate these capabilities or how to map these capabilities on, um, on SAM. This will probably also provide us with the answer to why are we doing certain of these capabilities? Why are we building this up? But the next step is also like, okay, in what kind of order do we do this? Do we start from scratch? Do we like, what kind of capabilities are we going to do first? So we are really need, we need a roadmap to do this. So there, we already have another project within OWASP. Some of you might have heard of it, others maybe not, but I would really recommend for you to have a look at it. It's called the Threat Modeling Playbook. The Threat Modeling Playbook is a project that helps you set up a threat modeling practice. So it's not telling you how to do your threat modeling, it's helping you to set up a threat modeling practice in an organization. So it covers five stages, and a lot of activities underneath that. So it's not a capability, model. It is really a playbook. This was great. So again, we can do mapping here. And that's what we did. More mapping. So what we do here is first stage, getting stakeholder buy-in. Maps really well on execution, governance, resource allocation, value assessment, and status tracking. Again, embedding threat modeling in your organization in the way you're working, linking it with your risk management frameworks, maps really well on these kind of capabilities. Training people, again, here we have mappings, uh, creating a role, creating a positive culture, actually mapped really well on most of these capabilities, um, and then actually performing your threat modeling as part of your processes uh, were mapped in there. And then last but not least, again, tool-assisted process, which is part of the threat modeling playbook as well, where you probably are going to use a tool to scale it up. So this helps us to find out what kind of like order that we can use or apply building up this kind of, these kind of capabilities. So let's think about a small organization that does agile development, uh, maybe has a couple of teams, and how do we fit threat modeling in agile development? We consider threat modeling as part of stories in the backlog, and if there are stories in there that really are a need or would trigger um, threat modeling that scope, we'd be doing that as part of that scope, as part of that particular sprint. Uh, so that's, that's how you would be doing it. Okay, so how then are we going to build up this particular threat modeling practice? What is our minimum viable product for doing threat modeling? That's where we bring in the level one capabilities and we can map them on our, on our roadmap. And so there's only a couple of them that we need to have this MVP. First one is, again, we have to make sure that we have leadership involved that recommends or maybe even mandates to do this. So defining policy and standards would be your first step. Your second step would be integrating that in your policies that teams commit the appropriate time, money, budget to do this. And that you also capture the value of threat modeling. And so that you, once you have a threat model and it has impact on your security level of your, of your system, that you're providing that, that positive feedback loop. So those three 
capabilities are the first capabilities that you would put in place. Supporting the teams in doing that would be the one that helps people to actually to train them and to perform threat modeling as an activity. And you would definitely be looking at the security champions in the different teams to, uh, to help them do that and to actually perform the threat modeling. You still have to do the threat modeling. You can set up a practice, whatever, but you still have to do this. Obviously, if you have a couple of these applications, you have to prioritize your different uh, threat modeling activities. You have to make sure that you capture your threat models. You make sure that you evaluate your architecture for the different typical threats and that you link that to your risk management process. And that's it. This is it. So we went from all the capabilities to the, what is it, five, nine, the nine capabilities that you perform or that you set up in this kind of roadmap to come up with a minimum program that would help small to medium organization to help uh, to do and start threat modeling. So that's, that's the output. Uh, we had to do a lot of mappings for that, but actually it uh, has become, was, was quite useful. And it makes the capabilities much more tangible and usable uh, to structure those in, uh, in this kind of role. So with that, the next steps, what did we learn? We mapped these capabilities, and we did a lot of mapping here. Um, quite, I, I, we have some assurance that the mapping is, is good, but we really want to also make uh, sure that, uh, that, it's, uh, that it's good enough. So we've shared those. Um, again, uh, have a look at them. And we'd really hope that you'd review those, those mappings and see how they can be improved. But of course, I'm pretty sure that we've missed maybe some of the mappings or they can be improved. Um, Really make sure that you tune this towards your own kind of organization. Level, I look at what kind of level of maturity you need to have your threat modeling program, because this was like an exercise for a level one, but you'd probably also create a similar kind of roadmap with level two activities, so you'd have to add the level two activities. Um, also try to keep it simple, so only like do this, I would say, I would say as head of the program, uh, and come up with the capabilities that you think are useful for the teams in scope. And then review, well, for us, what, what we've seen is that the threat modeling playbook that we currently have as part of, uh, of the OWAS project, what we're going to do is you're going to add the links to the capabilities in there. So that's quite easy and, and easier for you to leverage that. And probably going to update the threat modeling playbook a little bit with some of the activities or capabilities that we were not able to map fully. And maybe even consider updating the threat modeling stream in, uh, in OWASP some. Because it, uh, I think it was really useful to see what kind of capabilities are out there and where some of the, I would say, tension was between the capabilities and the threat modeling and how threat modeling is described in OWASP some. Um, and we see there's definitely, and there's always room for improvement, but I would think that in uh, some 2.1 or 2.5 potentially stream, threat modeling might and will be improved based on uh, on this mapping. So that's it. So 85 slides in 30 minutes. Um, probably a record. Any questions on this? Oh, that's not a question. Thanks, Eva. So um, starting with the questions, if anybody has any questions, feel free to come here and ask your question. Hello. I, I saw that you're connecting the SAM defect management with the results of the threat model. Yes. Do you see also that that defect management could go to a corporate vulnerability management program to have like a holistic uh, treatment for, for all the, the, the findings together or, or, or not? Uh, yes, I would think so. So you're referring to Oh, this one, yes. Um, actually, yes, I would say so, uh, and, and it's, it's this one and this one. Um, so the stream itself, defect tracking, explains why and, and how to capture those defects, 
but especially if you would be doing this on a, on a, like a larger scale, you will need tools like Defect Dojo, uh, to name like a random, I would say, project within OSP, but all kinds of other tools like ASPM tools to capture output of any security activity. And threat modeling would be more and like one of the most important ones. And any, I would say, threat finding or vulnerability or design flaw out of your threat model that is not immediately fixed within the team would be or should be covered with these kind of tools. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Any uh, any other questions? So I have one. So um, thanks for the presentation. Um, do you have any real examples that did, do you participated in in real uh, threat modeling activities in companies? And if so, how long does it take for a standard project? Yeah. So so what we see is, is if once we you need to roll out threat modeling in a bigger organization is. Uh, you can't just, uh, I would say, uh, we, we have Adam here who wrote a really good book. You just can't send the, good, the book to all the developers. You, you have to set up a way of working. And so based on the type of organization, some of these capabilities will be really worthwhile. So it starts with setting up like understanding what kind of threat modeling methodology fits the organization, having one or two people who really understand that, who start to help out the different teams in becoming better at it themselves. And so doing that and helping the different teams in starting to build their threat models, becoming better at that, and then sharing that experience as part of a community with the other teams is really the key to, uh, to becoming better at uh, doing this. And that would map on some of these level one capabilities, but also a couple of the level two capabilities. Thank you. Yes, I see there's... Oh, go ahead. Ooh, question from Adam. <laughs> <laughs> so, so first, thanks for your kind words about my book. And even though it won't work, I'd like to suggest you try to give a copy to everyone. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but, but more seriously, I, I really like the answer you just gave. And the question I was going to ask is about what goes into level one of SAM and the things you were just saying about needing to get some internal proof points, needing to answer questions like the gent asked about how long is this going to take. And so I'm curious if maybe level one in SAM needs to be split out a little bit with a few more stepping stones. Yeah. Um, so if... Let me... Uh, yes. So these would be level one capabilities. These map to level one activities. In level one activities, in some, actually there's some granularity. Uh, the way we, we measure, uh, for instance, uh, the way we would be doing threat modeling. Threat modeling level one is doing this, like doing ad hoc threat modeling and at least persisting the threat model, making sure it's, 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 uh, bless you, so that it's available for, for follow up threat modeling. Okay. The way you answer in some is not like yes, no, but it's like yes, uh, no, or for some of the systems, or for uh, the majority of them, or for all of them. So there's already a granular answer in those levels. So um, in the way that some works, it's not like one or two or three. Sometimes you have like 1.3 uh, or 1.4 in terms of a level of maturity, because there's quite some granularity in the underlying measurement of the activities. Thank you. I will check that out in more depth. Yes, definitely. Uh, question. Oops, sorry. Yeah. It sort of follows on from that, and I was just thinking about tooling, because you've got a lot of what to do. Yes. Yeah, but yeah. you haven't got um, how to do. You could use Stride. You could use etc. Yes. So when someone's just putting their, doing the level one, starting to try and demonstrate the value, what tooling is going to become crucial. Yes, absolutely. So how do you get people so they can start using tools and see the value quickly rather than going to buy an expensive tool, take six months before they actually get anywhere, and then say, well, okay, yep. the exec senior leadership are going to say, well, we're not seeing the value. We want to see value in weeks, not months. So what's the recommendation? And will your playbook go to that level? Yes, yeah, it actually it does. So... The, the, how you would be doing it, and so the, there's, there's so many ways to do threat modeling. So methodological, methodological openness is really key, but it's really part of step three, choosing a threat modeling methodology that fits your way of working. So if you're highly regulated, you'll probably need quite a formal way of doing threat modeling. 
If you're more agile and you need to support your development or product teams with security decisions, it's probably going to be a more lightweight way of doing threat modeling. So, and there's different options there. But indeed, um, as a last step here, the tool-assisted process is a capability that it, it fits a level three, I would say, in some, but I would argue that you probably also even introduce it earlier, mm -hmm. but it should only be automated if you know how you need to do this. So you first need to train people on, on understanding what they're doing, and then you can make it more scalable by introducing a methodology. And then the tooling will help you at capturing it in a uniform format and like managing more than yeah. maybe 10 or 100 threat models on, a, on like an organizational scale. Because I can think about even for a very small business, they're aware of some of the threats. Actually, they would probably benefit even at a level one from some very simple threat modeling. Mm -hmm. yep. But obviously they can't afford... Sorry, <laughs> thought I had a loud enough voice. <laughs> um, but obviously they can't afford expensive tools. So what would OWASP recommend? Would the Threat Dragon or SSO, yeah, would, be, so would, be, would, would, they, would that be a good start that, for That would be a do? good starting point. So a Threat Dragon, uh, the Microsoft Threat Modeling tool, uh, the, there's other tools there as well that are, I would say, free or open source that, uh, that help you support basic activities of doing Threat Modeling. Um, once you would like scale it up, some of the commercial tools out there are indeed have are expensive, but they provide also all the risk patterns and all the management around that. So that also has has value. And I haven't seen like uh, an open source tool that comes up to that kind of level. But there's place for different kind of tools. Let's try that. Different kind of organizations. So <laughs> okay. So but yeah. So and I would say the most important tool, however, is a tool between the two ears, and a, probably a flipboard or or a whiteboard will also help you. In the beginning, yes, Adam. Yeah, if I could also recommend OWASP Cornucopia, yeah, and that whole family of card decks, they're they're really helpful for getting people into a playful state of mind. Yeah, so I'm going to to repeat that for the for the for the recording. Yeah, so one of the tools there, OWASP Cornucopia, is a card game with different threats, different recommendations of how to do it. Yes, absolutely. Alex, right. yeah, I have a few questions. So I will. Get, take to us, but I can, may return to the microphone. So one question is uh, in your steps about structuring program, I see a need to segment uh, threat modeling of greenfield versus threat modeling of brownfield. So there is a classic, okay, before you develop application, you threat model. That's pretty clear. 99% applications we have are they brownfield and they are maintained. And what we currently prioritizing is threat modeling from uh, defects. And uh, so as soon as it's, there is a defect, gap, uh, um, it has to be threat modeled. And, uh, threat modeling of requirement for changes, because even like changing application, it's also like mini green application, you have to threat model before. So uh, this, do you see this segmentation is local to one specific implementation, one specific company, or it's something which need to be reflected in some? So segmentation between green and field and brown field. So, if I understand correctly, the, the, the brownfield, the, there is already some kind of methodology or some kind of activity. Yes, there is already application. Yes. There is already yes. application. Yes. So it's yeah. too it's too late to proactively determine okay. threat for future implementation. It's already here. Yes. So you use a, you use a threat model defects, yeah. so this is reactive, or you, you use threat model incremental change, this is proactive. Yes, yes. so in, in, in a perfect world, huh? You do threat modeling as part of the design stage. In reality, and we have. It was ten years ago. It was ten years ago, the developers left. You have yes. no idea what it does, but you can still, and it's never too late. It's never too late to create your threat model. Baseline, yes, to recreate baseline what was missing ten years ago. Yes. <laughs> but then to fuse a threat model is a defect or changes. Well, it, 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 so once you do your threat model, hopefully there will be some actionable outcome which might be changes and 
might even be the change of like uh, phasing out the application because you don't have any other options or or, yeah. or putting it in a segmented network because you don't like, want to have like any any results if it would be compromised. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I, 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 um, I don't think we have any more questions. So one last round of applause. Oh, you have a one more question. Yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. Alex has another question. question uh, about, <laughs> Go ahead. about this major tool. Uh, this yes, one, yes, <laughs> yes. So uh, in our recent experiments, we're doing very active experiments. Uh, we found the tool named uh, LLM is extremely effective in uh, augmenting our brain, How is it especially. Called? LLM, uh, large language ah, yeah, okay, models. Yeah, LLM, yeah, yeah, LLM. Yes, uh, <laughs> specifically in the part which uh, treated as uh, bad and need to be eliminated everywhere are hallucinations. Mm -hmm. So what I found the problem, many developers I work with, they cannot imagine bad scenarios. They, it's difficult for them to hallucinate. LLM in a hot mode, doing it perfectly. So perfectly st good structured prompts gave us very good results of very uh, good threat threats, which later validated and found like, oh yeah, that's, we haven't even thought about this. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about this direction? Uh, have you heard anybody else experimenting in this direction? Uh, any specific prompts. We're, we're working on prompts on rocks, so we're working this on a full-scale uh, LLM application. Mm -hmm. So uh, we should probably consider one of the capabilities uh, to be around LLMs or with uh, generative AI or AI in general. I think it has its value uh, if, if used in, in the correct way. Uh, so there's there's definitely ways or scenarios where um, an LLM can help you increase that understanding or automate the creation of your threat model. But as with any other activity, you have to be careful with it. Uh, you have to validate what comes out of it. Um, but that's, I think, true for any LLM scenario. And, uh, but I think it has its value. And it, uh, every activity that increases... I would say, may, or makes uh, threat modeling more efficient, or would even trigger people in doing or considering threat modeling. I would, I would applaud. Um, but then, I absolutely, I would say, support the development teams in understanding what comes out of that should be validated. Yes. Okay. Okay. So now is it. Thanks. One last round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.